Okay, here is a video on how to calculate and compute with squares, square roots, cubes, and cube roots of numbers. Okay, here's the basics. A test of your multiplication facts. So I always tell students it's best to learn the calculator, really be good with that before um, you spend time trying to memorize your multiplication facts if you still don't know them. Um, the first six questions, you can't use a calculator, so you will need to know your multiplication facts. But the remaining 40, you can use a calculator. And so for that reason, if our goal is to just pass the GED, um, knowing the calculator, I think, is more important. So I always encourage students to use it. Um, if you want to focus on your multiplication facts, that's a very worthwhile. It will help you a lot in life. Um, that's not what this video is about, though. So I'm going to kind of just go over those, You can, and I'll also show you on the uh, calculator. So this is a question to you. What number times itself is 49? What number times itself is 49? And I'll tell you the answer is 7, because 7 times 7 equals 49. Keep in mind, though, so does negative 7 times negative 7. So there's actually two answers here. It could be 7 or negative 7. So let me go ahead and show you how to, how to enter this in on the calculator. So you've got second here to get this green uh, radical sign. So notice I hit the second button. It's red. And now I've got that. And we can put 49 in here. The calculator is only going to give you one answer. But if you do negative 7 times negative 7, you will get 49. Okay, um, this is 6 squared, so what this is, uh, is what number, what is the answer if you take 6 times 6, or 6 times itself? So 6 times 6 is 36, okay? Um, keep in mind here, what if, what if we had negative 6 squared? Um, and we actually mean by negative 6, we mean the whole negative 6, like this. So if you just do, look what happens over here on the calculator if you put in negative 6 and then you square it. Hit enter. You're going to get a negative number. And that's probably not the answer you want. Because really what you want, this often comes up in, in like the quadratic formula, for example. Um, what you want is you want to square negative 6. So you have to use the parentheses. Negative 6, parentheses, and then square that. Then you get the right answer. Because this first one, we have negative 6 squared with no parentheses I'm here in the calculator. This is following PEMDAS. It's squaring, so it's getting 36. And then it's multiplying it by a negative to get negative 36. So you have to put the parentheses in to kind of tell the calculator, uh, here's the order by which you should do things. So keep that in mind. I have seen this, this type of thing come up on the GED. So 4 to the 3rd, this is a question to you, what, what is the answer if you take 4 times 4 times 4? So let's do the calculator first this time. You could do 4. Here, this little upside down V, that's the exponent sign, so you could put a 3 in here. And the answer is 64. Square root of 81 is similar to this one. It's going to be 9 or negative 9. So again, if you take negative 9 times a negative 9, you're going to get 81. But if you just do the square root of 81, you only get one answer. But negative 9 also works. And so for this reason, test makers like to formulate questions where they want to make sure you know the negative is also a potential answer. So keep that in mind. Let's do three, um, sorry, the cube root of 27. That's how you would say this one. 3, the cube root. Cube is uh, denoted here by the 3, and then the root is the, here's your root sign. So this one is a little tricky. So oftentimes if I get students that want to do, so here it is, it's the x, they want to hit this first. And notice it gives you an a and s. That stands for your previous answer. Uh, and that's not what you want. So what you have to do is enter in the 3 first, and then second, and then this button. Then you put in 27. So this is what number times itself three times is 27, and the answer is 3. 3 times 3 times 3 is 27. 
So the answer is three. Okay, so here's all the answers. Let's go ahead and back and circle them. All right. So using squares and cubes to test negative number understanding. So again, you have the square root of four. This could be, oh, not the, not the square root. The answer could be two. Two times two is four, but so is negative two. Um, what is the cube root of negative 216? So what number times itself three times is negative 216? Um, you can put this in a calculator if you want. Do the three first, you need to do the three first. Then you could put in a negative 216. And you see the answer is negative six. Negative six times negative six times negative six. So when you take negative six times negative six, you're gonna get positive 36 drop down this other negative 6, and that's what makes it back to being a negative. And so your answer is negative 6. Okay? All right. So a negative 4 squared, um, remember 4 times 4 is 16, and negative 4 times negative 4 is also 16. All right, so if you take negative 4 to the third, again, this is the same as taking negative 4 times negative 4 times negative 4. You could put it in the calculator. Um, again, I would put it in parentheses. Negative 4 and then exponent 3, and you'll get the answer is negative 64, which is correct. Now, this is a precarious one. Um, what is the square root of negative 9? So if you remember, 3 times 3 is positive 9. That doesn't work. Well, what about negative 3 then? Negative 3 times negative 3 is also positive 9. Hmm. What if we take negative 3 times positive 3? Sure enough, that will get you negative 9, but guess what? Negative 3 and 3 are not the same numbers. You can't do this. This is not what this is asking. This is asking what number times itself is negative 9. And the answer is n there is no solution or it's undefined. And test makers like this. They like this a lot. And so you want to be uh, aware of this and be on the lookout for it and don't get tricked by it. And also know what this undefined is. I always tell my students, Undefined is just a mathematical term for weird. Like it's possible, like in math, like we can write it, but there's no solution to it. It doesn't really make sense. Um, so that's sort of what undefined means. All right, and so every now and then I see, um, especially in GED books, simplifying roots and the square root of 200. Well, if you put, if you have a calculator and you put the square root of 200 in the calculator, you're gonna get, uh, well, they actually do it for you, two to the square root of 10. Um, and so how do they get that? Well, what they're doing is, is you can actually break these apart. We know, how many ways can we make 200, right? Um, we could do 100 times two, we could do 25 times eight. Um, so if you do 100 times two, that's the same as taking the square root of 100 times the square root of 2. And if you take the square root of 100, that is 10. And then we have this, 10 square root of 2. If you were to take the square root of uh, 25 and 8, okay, so if we do 20 square root of 25 times the square root of 8, well, the first thing is that there's a square root of 8 embedded in here. Um, we could do the square root of 25, and then we can break the square root of 8 up into the square root of 4 times the square root of 2. And these happen to be perfect squares, 25 and 4. So the square root of 25 is 5 times the square root of 4, which is 2. And then this is as far as we can go here. So what's 5 times 2? It's 10. 10 times the square root of 2. So two different ways of getting the same answer. So this, to me, and for most of the students that I work with, this is a fairly advanced um, 
situation, advanced topic, I, I really encourage students to understand the calculator and I really encourage students to know the basics of um, cubing and squaring and uh, exponents and things like that. This, I would say, is a little bit more of an advanced topic. If you're, if you know, you've been fighting to get that 145, um, this can push you over. Um, if you're in the 130s or low 140s, I think there's easier stuff for you to learn. That being said, let's continue. Here we have the square root of 32, which, if we think, how many ways can we get 32? Well, you could do 16 times 2. And 16, square root of 16, happens to be a perfect square. Because what number times itself is 16? It's 4. 2, we can't go any further. And so there's your answer. Okay, let's do one more. All right, so this one is set up as a fraction. The square root of 32 over the square root of 2. So keep that in mind. You could also think of it like this. The square root of 32 over 2. How many times is 2 going to 32? Well, if you got to use calculator, go ahead. No problem. 32 divided by 2 is 16. So now you have the square root of 16, which we just learned is a perfect square. What number times itself is 16? And the answer is 4. So I hope this helps you um, understand some of the basics of squaring and cubing and also some of the more advanced stuff. Good luck. I hope you enjoyed this video. Please like this video if you found it valuable and subscribe if you would like to see more videos like these. Visit the link below to passtheged.org to see more videos and learning opportunities that will help you get the highest passing score on the GED. And good luck.